Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are all of the books that I've read so far in February. I've read 10 books so far in February. It is today, February 16th. And I'm gonna talk about those 10 books today. I know I look a little different compared to some of my other videos. This past week I've had horrible, horrible, horrible chronic migraines where I go to work or I even leave work they're so bad and just sleep until it's dinner time. I eat and then I go back to sleep. So yesterday was the first day that I fully like didn't get a full blown migraine and today is the first day I'm happy to say I didn't even get a little glimpse of a headache. So I am feeling much better. We think we found the culprit for um, my migraines. So that's good. But because of that, I didn't really get a lot of reading done um, at the beginning of the month because I was not feeling the best because I was just sleeping a lot because that's the only way I could get rid of the pain. And I'm just now starting to feel like a human again. So uh, you're getting fresh faced Ava, no makeup, just washed hair. <laughs> so um, yeah, but I really want to sit down and talk about these 10 books that I've read. I could have just gone over this video, you know, like been like, I haven't been feeling the best, let's not film it. But I really love talking about books and um, I'm finally feeling well enough to talk about them. So I really wanted to do it. This is like really fun for me. So anyway, that was a long little spiel. So let's get into these 10 books. Before we get on with the video, I want to mention today's sponsor, who is Rebecca Jenchak, who is the author of Tutoring the Player. This is the first book in the Campus Wallflower series. And this book features Daisy and Jordan. Daisy is the college good girl and Jordan is the hockey playboy. I have read this book. It was so stinking cute. I do have to continue on with the series. I have not yet. Um, but I really enjoy Rebecca Jenchak's writing. I'm actually gonna be talking about one of her books later on in this video so watch out for that but this one I read I think in the middle of last year and it was so cute and I am absolutely obsessed with this cover because I feel like it fully encapsulates both of these characters it's basically what I pictured them to look like so I love when artists and authors are able to come together to form like the most beautiful cover so Daisy in this book ends up becoming Jordan's tutor in college this is a college set romance and yes it's really cute I really enjoyed it I hope that y'all do too and be sure to go check out this book and the new cover and all the other books in the series by the way in the campus wallflower series will be out with new illustrated covers later on throughout the month so be sure to go check those out so yes be sure to go check out this new edition of tutoring the player and thank you so much to Rebecca Jenchak for sponsoring today's video Yes, thank you so much to Rebecca Jenchak for sponsoring this video. I really, really, really appreciate it. And you can get Tutoring the Player down below with the link in my bio. First one that I have is one that came out on the last day of January. Everyone was reading it. And that is House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass. This is her most recent book in the Crescent City series. And who wow. This book <laughs> threw me for a loop. Um, but I also want to say this is the first Sarah G. Mass book ooh, since Aka War came out, possibly, that I didn't, like, speed read it. Because <laughs> um, I first read Sarah G. Mass when only the first book in the Accord of Thorns and Roses series was out. And every book after that, I, like, was chomping at the bit to read it and read it all in one day and would like miss school or um I think when Aqua War came out I was a senior in high school all that long ago all that all, all that time ago and um I lit there was literally finals week and I read that book instead of studying for finals <laughs> it's fine I graduated we're good it's been a long time since then um but this was the first time I did not take one or two days to read a Sarah J Mass book um when the book released and I think that is just showing how I am growing as a reader in itself. I really wanted to take my time and not rush myself because I definitely wanted to know what happened. Um, but I also just wanted to remember everything because the second book in this series, remember nothing, remember absolutely nothing, but I didn't have the time or I didn't really want to reread it. So I just read like, not read, watched recap videos that were actually really helpful. So um, any hoozles. So I took my time with this book okay this is the third book in the crescent city series like i said i really loved this one it was so immersive it was very action-packed it reminded me of kingdom of ash last book in the throne of glass series it reminded me of kingdom of ash in a lot of ways that's why i'm a little bit huh that this 
is it the end of the series? Because I feel like it wrapped up the series pretty well. Um, there are some characters we still need information about, but I feel like it's very few. You know what I mean? So I felt like this book like wrapped up <laughs> the characters that we love pretty well. I just love sitting and reveling in these books. I feel like I'm just due for a whole Sarah J Mass universe reread very soon because they can be just so immersive. The world building is just so cool to me that this just came from a woman's brain. <laughs> I don't want to say anything really because I don't want to spoil it, but there were some things I was like, oh, about or things I anticipated that we didn't really get, but that's okay. That's my own brain. You know what I mean? Like I shouldn't judge a book because of what I predicted. You know what I mean? So um, I really enjoyed this. I did. And the best way I can describe it is like if you loved Kingdom of Ash, I feel like you'll love this book too. And also some people didn't like Kingdom of Ash. Some of my brain is like, how did you not love Kingdom of Ash? It's one of the best books ever in that whole series. Um, that's just me. <laughs> um, so anyway, I really enjoyed this and it's going on my Sarah J Mass shelf. Now, after reading that hunky doozy of a book, <laughs> I really wanted a palette cleanser, so I picked up a Cassie Mint novella. This is Whole Lot of Grump by Cassie Mint. This one was a really fun read. Our heroine is a massage therapist who has been pining after her big CEO, like billionaire client, for as long as she's been giving him massages. She has a bunch of clients, but she's always dying to go to this one, guys like office she just can't help but start like falling for him he's this big grumpy boss man who doesn't like to be touched except for by the heroine and little does the heroine know that the hero has been pining after her as well so i thought it was a fun quick read i honestly love like masseuse massage therapist romances i don't know what it is but that's that's kind of a occupation for a few of the heroines that i've read about before maybe i should make that a whole video let me know um, but I feel like that's very niche. <laughs> anyway, um, tropes in here, grumpy hero, there's pining, massage therapist, uh, novella, and you have an innocent hero. I know that's a favorite trope amongst my fellow viewers. So I love that trope as well. So I had to mention that. I did pick up Then Came You by Lisa Kleypas. This is the first book in her series that's titled The Gamblers of Cravens. This is one of the few series that I have not read yet by Lisa Kleypas and I've been really just wanting to read her backlist. That's what my goal was with picking this book up is to read more of her backlist titles. So this one's about Lily and Alex. So Lily is in the ton and she's kind of known for acting like a man. She does all these scandalous things that a guy would do but the ton doesn't really judge her for whatever reason. And Alex is our hero and he doesn't really like Lily at first because she is so outspoken and very reckless with some of the things that she chooses to do, but they end up falling for each other anyway. I don't know what happened with this one, but I'm reading all of my friends' reviews and like everyone gave this book five stars or close to it. Unfortunately, this was not my cup of tea. I didn't really love the heroine all that much. You get to read throughout the book that the heroine is looking for somebody. Somebody was taken from her and she's trying to find that somebody again. I don't know what it is, but I felt like she could have tried harder. Honestly, I felt like she could have tried harder. Like I just keep picturing my family members and if I was taken or if I was lost, like they wouldn't be doing the, some of the things that, they, that the heroine was doing. You know what, I, I don't really know how to describe it. I felt like she did not do enough <laughs> that's just me in my opinion though like i couldn't help but thinking about her um doing like all these weird like scandalous things like she would jump like the first chapter she jumped in the river thames and was like gambling and doing all this stuff and yeah she's trying to earn money to get this person back but also the whole time that was all going on i'm like you literally could have just gone this way or this way, or this way, or gone all these different routes and have already found this person that has been missing for so long. And I also was not a fan of the hero. That's just me though and my tastes and stuff. This just was not my type of historical romance. Um, I am really interested in book number two because I know that's Derek Craven's book. And I know everyone loves Derek Craven and I hope that I do too. We'll see because this book just unfortunately was not for me. Next, I decided to pick up Goal by Alexandria House. I know this is a favorite from some of my friends and it was really fun. This is a hockey nanny romance. So our hero is a professional hockey player and he and his girlfriend 
um, old fiance just bought this really extravagant house and kind of like have their life planned out. The hero's just kind of going along for the ride. He's like, she wants all these things and I've been with her for this long, so why not? Um, but then he gets a call one day that um, his very estranged father and his like wife after he was with this hero's mother, right, passed away and they left or the father left the hero with his half siblings. So there's these two kids he now has custody of, which the girlfriend, fiance, is not happy about whatsoever. She does not wanna take care of these kids, doesn't know these kids, doesn't like how these kids being in their life has completely thrown their plans out the window that she had. Enter our heroine who is hired to be the nanny. And this is the romance between our hero and the nanny. So there is slight cheating in here just by the way, but we don't care because the Fiance is garbage. If you want just a short, insta-lovey romance, the audiobook was really good. I really loved the narrators in here. I definitely recommend this one. I loved the kids. The nanny aspects were really great. I really loved the heroine and how caring she was towards these kids and really wanted to help these kids and their older brother connect because she could definitely see that disconnect there. So I really enjoyed how she took the time to help all three of these people connect with each other. There is triggerings in here for miscarriage, death of a parent, and childhood trauma. So please be aware of that. For tropes, I have black love, forced proximity, a hockey romance, insta love, it's a nanny romance, an older woman. She is like, I want to say five or six years older than our hero. Um, plus size representation and it is a sports romance. Since I read that last Cassie Met novella, I wanted to read another one. So I just decided to finish the series because I've already read book one in that novella series. Um, so I picked up number two because I hadn't read number two yet. This is Grump Gone Bad. The heroine of the story is a personal assistant, an assistant to this big CEO boss man and not the same one from the other book I talked about. It's a different one. Anyway, she walks into the office one day and she sees the hero sitting at his desk and she's like, that is not my boss. She has never felt an inch of attraction, like iota of attraction for her boss before ever. And she takes one look at this man who looks so similar to her boss. Could literally be his clone, but she's like, uh, that's not him. I've never felt this way about him. Even I'm just looking at him, I know that is not him. Turns out that is his identical twin brother. Um, and the boss man asked his twin brother, who's a construction worker type of guy, can you fill in for me for like a week? I need to go do something very important. And just basically kind of like parent trap, you know, like switch places, you know what I mean? The brother like agrees. And so this is the romance between the heroine and her boss's brother. It was a fun, quick read. I just read Cassie Mint novellas when I'm like, I don't really know what to pick up, but I don't want to get in a book slump. Like I want to keep reading because that's like my main hobby. So I just picked this one up. It was really fun. Tropes for this one, you have a boss assistant, like kind of, because he's not really her boss, but he looks like her boss. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a novella and it is a workplace romance. Next, I have the Rebecca Genshack book that I talked about in the intro that I read that I really enjoyed. This is called Sweet Spot. The heroine of the story goes to Valley U, which is a college. I think Rebecca Genshack has written other books in this series, but this one was like a complete standalone. It even says in the summary, like complete standalone book. Anyway, so our heroine is on the golf team at this college and this book starts out with our hero who is significantly Significantly older. I want to say maybe like nine, 10 years older than the heroine. He used to be, I think, a professional golfer. Um, and now he owns this business um, where he and a bunch of other people team up together to coach and give pointers on athletes. Basically, he kind of like owns this forum where athletes can submit their swing or um, their pitching or whatever it is, like whatever sport you're doing, and they can get pointers and tips and tricks on how to improve. So kind of like a personal coach. Anyway, so the hero just happens to be on campus because the boys golf team like kind of like hired him to help give them feedback, right? Positive feedback. And he notices the heroine off by herself, practicing, swinging some balls. And he's like, okay, this girl has a lot of potential. Um, and he kind of gives her like his business card and it kind of goes from there. He slowly becomes her personal coach and really tries to help her become the best golfer possible, the best version of herself that he knows that she can be. He sees a lot of potential in her and it was really fun. This was my first golf romance and I am somewhat familiar with golf. Honestly, the only like golf that I personally played is like mini golf and then <laughs> golf on the Wii, obviously, which 
can say I kind of crushed that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not well versed in golf really, but I felt like I learned quite a lot while reading this. I felt like I don't really know a lot about golf, but I fully understood a lot of what was going on in here. There might be a few things that I didn't really know, but like, I think that's gonna happen with a lot of sports romances that you read because you don't know everything about baseball or you don't know everything about hockey. You know what I mean? Unless you're very honed in on that sport, you know? And I honestly just love a good coach athlete romance. And it was a very interesting dynamic because he's not like her coach coach on the college team. Her college team coach can like suck it. He's awful. I don't like him. Okay. We don't like him. Um, so she kind of has like two coaches in this instance and she doesn't like her college coach and she can see that he's not giving her the right pointers and stuff to help her succeed. He doesn't really care about her as a person. And she can see that this hero does like, she can see that he cares about everything that she does and what's the best for her. So I really liked that. For tropes for this one, it's an age gap romance, coach athlete, it's a college romance, and it's a sports romance. I picked up a monster novella, again, to cleanse the palette. This is The Nightmare's Kiss. This one's by Skylar Gray, and I found it on Kindle Unlimited one day while scrolling, like I do quite often. This one is really interesting. I will say so our heroine moves back to her small town. There's not really any job opportunities in this small town after she goes to college, but there is this place called The Facility. Okay, it's just, it's The Facility. Like it's very ominous and people from out of town work there. Like no one in town really works there. Anyway, she finds an inn to get like a job opportunity there and she ends up learning that the facility is full of people studying these like monster creatures and at first she doesn't see the subject that she's just observing she's just supposed to observe this subject and write notes all day long that's basically her whole job okay it's kind of like this, this shadow cloud in this room okay in this very small room and she has like the one-way glass so she can just watch him and she doesn't realize for a few days that like this isn't a thing. This is like a, a sentient being. And then she starts having dreams, dare I say nightmares about this shadow entity. And it turns very hot in those dreams, I will say that. So this was a fun, short, like shadow monster romance book, which I think this is like the second shadow monster romance book that I read and I need more in my life. Like I thought this was really fun. I will say it's not my favorite monster romance, but it was a great like little palette cleanser. Um, There is a trigger warning in here, by the way, for uh, vaping. So that is in here as well as like blood gore and all that other stuff that sometimes comes with monster romances. I didn't see it in any reviews that I read. Um, So I just wanted to mention that on here because I do know that is a trigger for some people. Tropes for this one, it's a forbidden romance because they obviously cannot be together she's like observing him at her job and it's a monster romance next i picked up the arc for truthfully yours by kaden armstrong this one did take me a lot longer than i expected it to because i was this was like in the midst of me being really ill um my head was like exploding but i really was loving this book it just took me longer than i anticipated and with my migraines sometimes i kind of like have memory loss and so i forgot some things you know what i mean so this is totally like a me thing of me not remembering a lot about this book um but this is kaden armstrong's debut novel which is so fun and it didn't really feel like a debut novel to me which i think is like do for applause because I think that's what authors strive for you know like they strive not to read like a debut author. I felt like this book was very much a love letter to those in the neurodivergent and disability community. Um, this is Own Voices representation for um, autism. So this is the romance between Paige and Charlie. So Paige is our hero and he is a very famous actor on this very popular TV show, essentially kind of like Star Trek. Charlie is our heroine and she is a fan of said show. There happens to be an occurrence in the prologue where Charlie goes to a Comic-Con of sorts to go see the panel of this show. They're gonna do like an interview panel um, where people can go up and ask them questions on like a microphone in the audience, you know? And so the heroine's in line, she has her question all ready to go, but there's a little boy, like 12 year old boy standing in front of her asks a question towards um, one of the, um actors uh, it's not our hero by the way and he says some pretty ableist things and the heroine's question just goes out the window when it's her turn and she just goes off on this guy and uh rightfully so and after that she kind of has a little bit of um online backlash because people filmed her and um, there's some people that would like defend this actor till the day they die they don't really care what he says um doesn't see he did anything wrong Anyway, um, so she has kind of like gone off the internet 
it's been months later, she ends up getting a summer job for like three months in Scotland to take care and run a bookstore while the owner is on vacation. And one of her first like nights there, someone comes into the apartment and she like thinks someone's breaking in. So she like hits him with a golf club and it's our hero. And she like calls the owner and she's like, why is this famous actor getting into your apartment? And she's like, oh, that's my brother. He sometimes stays here. <laughs> so these two are roommates. And um, yeah, that's all I really want to say about that one. I am going to be talking more about this book in a vlog that is coming out towards the end of the month. So you can look forward to that. But I really enjoyed it. For tropes for this one, there's anxiety representation. Again, like I said, own voices autism rep. It's a Scotland setting, a celebrity, forced proximity, and it is character driven. I did a reread of Radiance by Grace Draven. I have read this book way too many times. I've read it over 10 times in my life. I love this book so much. Okay, so this is the first book in her Wraith King series. We're doing the Wraith Kings read along. That live show is in about like 10 days for me. So um, I need to read the other two books, reread them, but I love the series. This is the romance between Ildico and Brishan. It's a fantasy romance. They find their other species like kind of ugly, <laughs> okay, but they have to get put in this arranged marriage due to their families wanting an alliance. Um, and it's basically their friends to lovers romance while they're married. It's very character driven. I love everything about this. I love the slow progression from like friends to lovers. It is beautiful. And I can't wait to reread the other books because they're just so good as well. And the last one that I would love to mention is Shadows and Whispers by Casey Mills. I saw this one on my Libby. I saw this cover and I was like, that cover is so pretty. And then I looked on Goodreads and I was like, it has a 4.67 rating on Goodreads. That is fantastic. So I needed to pick it up. I checked it out on Libby and um, this is, I don't know if the hero is in the mafia, but I kind of read like he was. He's this very rich, powerful man. Okay. I think I'm just gonna say he's in the mafia. It never says that mafia, but it like, you know, it, I think it is. Anyway, so he wants to get in kind of like a family alliance with another family that's in the same realm as he. Let's just say another mafia family, if you will. The eldest brother of that family tells him, "Here, I have two sisters. Here's one of them. You can marry her. She's gonna, you're gonna get married." But then he ends up seeing this woman one night at a club that he frequents a lot dancing and she's absolutely stunning he comes to find out that that woman that like held his attention captivated him is the sister to his possible bride and he's like oh no no we're gonna marry this other girl instead i'm not marrying her sister no i want to marry her she is absolutely stunning so our heroine in here she is a dancer a professional dancer she loves to dance um, I know there are some of my viewers out there that love dancing romances, so the heroine does just that she's a dancer. I love the discussion of dancing here. I thought it was fantastic. There is representation here for bipolar disorder. Um, the hero was diagnosed at a young age with bipolar disorder, and that is talked about quite frequently in this book. This might be a spoiler for some people, but I also think it's a trigger warning, and I personally think that trigger warnings are not spoilers because there are some people out there who need these trigger warnings like myself, like to know about them, okay? So um, the trigger warning that I want to mention is like, I don't really know how to describe it in like shortened terms, but basically there are characters in this book that use the hero's disability against him. They sabotage his medication and make him think he's crazy. So just like, please be aware of that. Like some people manipulate him and his disability and his mental health. So just please be aware of that because that is a portion of this book and it goes very far. I did finish this book today, so I haven't really wrapped my mind around everything, but I definitely would recommend this one, especially because it's a black love romance with a beautiful dancer and just a hero who absolutely becomes obsessed with our heroine. Absolutely obsessed with her. At the beginning of this book, you read about him in his inner monologue being like, I don't want a wife. I don't want to be with no woman. Like, nope, not happening. I don't need a woman in my life. He takes one glimpse of this woman dancing and is like, she will be mine. She will be mine. I love, I love that. Okay, I do. Um, and the heroine is very adamant to like say, nope, not, not gonna happen. No, <laughs> but he is gonna persuade her in every way possible. Like one of the first times he meets her, he's like, um, you're coming to dinner with me tonight. And she's like, uh, no, I have plans. He's like, cancel him. You're coming to dinner with me tonight. Like he's very persistent. And sometimes I can love that. Sometimes it works for me in books and sometimes it doesn't. This one, for me. Okay, so um, I really love just this book and the also discussion of mental health in here was really important, I feel like. And the 
Heroine is really strong for how she took care of the hero in some instances because there are some people out there that would just bolt for the hills and she was like no I'm in this wholeheartedly I'm with this man it's the day I die like he is mine I'm with him no matter what so I really appreciated this book and I hope that y'all do too. Anyways there you have it those are all the books that I've read so far in February. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and again be sure to go check out the new version of Tutoring the Player by Rebecca Jenshack. The link to that book is down below. Please go check it out. I would love to see other people love this book and this cover. It's absolutely stunning. If you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me like the ballet shoes or a dancing emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.